Hello and welcome. Today we are in the tier 8 Italian battleship, the Vittorio Veneto. We're in a tier 8 to 10 battle on the map Mountain Range. The Vittorio Veneto is not exactly a great tier 8 battleship. She's, I would say, the weak point in the Italian battleship line. Uh, the Caracciolo, the tier 7 one, I think is better. The Lepanto is better and obviously the Colombo is better too. Now, uh, there's a number of reasons. One, the firing angles on the turrets are pretty bad. Uh, she only gets eight guns with still terrible accuracy. The guns are just as powerful as on the Caracciolos. And she doesn't really get anything extra. And that's basically why I think the Veneto is not a particularly good tier 8 battleship. The SAP can hit hard, however, due to the accuracy, you usually just don't get enough hits. Also, 33 second reload as you just saw, and we're still talking 8 guns. Oh, wow, this actually did 11k damage. However, the Alsace was almost full HP. If I fire that salvo again, chances are I won't do more than 6k damage. Even if I had the same amount of shells, and I think I got quite lucky with the number of shell hits on that one. The guns are also 380 millimeters, which means that you can't overmatch 27 millimeters of armor. Therefore, fighting things like the Moines can be quite problematic. And I think SAP in general isn't nearly as powerful as I think people's impression is. At least not on the battleships. If you just fired AP the entire time, I think you wouldn't really be all that worse off. In some situations, you'd actually be better off because SAP explodes on contact, whereas the AP can go through already an already damaged section and hit something that still has HP. Now, the Veneto does have the smoke screen, which does allow you to disengage, which is exactly what I'm using it here for. This is actually why I was willing to... Oh, wow! That's a lot of planes going down suddenly. That really wasn't my AA, although maybe he just ran into a flak bubble. But anyway, the reason I actually followed my Fletcher so easily is because of the smoke screen. As an Italian battleship, I know that if the enemy doesn't have a radar around, or a very long range hydro, I can just always use my smoke screen and disengage, and then start kiting away. In any other type of battleship that doesn't have this kind of a smoke screen, well, you would probably uh, take a million damage while doing this. But in Italian battleships you can do that, and that's actually one of the nice things about the Italian battleships. I just don't think it kind of makes up for the lackluster performance of the guns, at least in my opinion. Wow, this Graf Zeppelin really wants to strike me, huh? Or at least somewhere around me. What was that? Did... what? He is torping me, right? Those torpedoes are supposedly meant for me. Okay, that's kind of weird. Also, I don't recommend specking the Italian battleships for secondaries either, because you'd basically be relying on secondaries getting fires, because most of the secondaries are 90mm caliber, so they can't actually get any penetrating damage on basically anything. However, the uh, smoke and secondary combination is kind of funny, because if you don't actually fire your main guns, the enemy can't see you. You don't get spotted when your secondaries fire. And so you can stealthily just secondary away at someone. North Carolina is showing complete broadside. Let's... oh wow! 7.7k! That's a lot more than I expected. Let's see what the front turrets do. Huh! Wow, that, that actually was a really good sell. I mean, I just hit four shells out of six from the front guns, right? Wow, I got really lucky on that salvo. Anyway, I think it's time to turn around and go back in again, because it does seem like my Elsas is finally pushing. Now, it does appear that this would be a ship line that I should really like, though, because being able to disengage is just so incredibly nice, because it allows me to go in and then come back out again without actually dying. I mean, I, I basically do the same thing in ships that don't have this kind of uh, ability. Wait, look at that dispersion! What was that? I mean, that's that's basically what I'm talking about when I mentioned the dispersion of the ship. The shells just kind of go all over all the time. 
and it's really unpleasant. This one was my leading, that's fine, but the earlier salvo on the FTG, that was pretty horrific. I'm gonna switch to AP here, because I, I think um, FTG has a lot of armor plates which you can't go through with SAP, I mean, I landed two shells in the last salvo, but they were both non-penetrations. Whereas AP will likely go through those armor plates and deal at least some damage. While AP can get overpens, SAP can't. Well, if my regular hits simply cannot penetrate, then doing overpens would still be an improvement. I am a little worried about pushing here. Summers is a pretty scary destroyer to deal with. At least to go closer. Oh, 13k! Damn! And that's only the front guns too, by the way. Wow. Wow. Okay. But anyway, there's a Summers in front of me, and that is pretty scary. Summers is a pretty good the torpedo destroyer. So either I'm gonna eat torps right now, or I simply manage to somehow outwit her. There, there really aren't any more choices than, than that. Okay, 9,000... Okay, well, I suppose that's it, huh? Okay, I think... Well, okay, so there's the summer stars, but I think one of the bombs missed entirely and the other one got the citadel. 5,800 damage. Okay, so Summers should have two more sets of tarps. Okay, no, I noticed there was another set on the side. That should probably be fine. I'm still gonna go a little diagonally and then start turning to the right. Basically, this kind of zigzagging throws off the aim of destroyers. And also it allows you to uh, move in a way which allows you to dodge torpedoes when the torpedoes are actually coming in. Because they're likely come in from the front of you, right? Okay. Graf Zeppelin is gonna drop me as well. There's the Summers. Let's take a shot, of course. She's slowing down. Interesting. I suppose she wanted uh, me to mi miss the shot. We avoided the Zeppelin torp bombers. And now we're gonna turn the other way a little bit. In case the summer is also launch torpedoes, so that we can potentially avoid those. Not to mention, this also helps with uh, d with dodging the shells that are coming from the middle of the map. And there's the summer's torp salvo, which we handily avoided again. Oh, summer's ate the uh, CV torp. That's excellent news. <laughs> Look at that surge! Wow. <laughs> Even if summer's had been perfectly broadsided. I would have still only landed one of those shells, because the rest just went too wide. I guess we can't really rely on the secondaries either, huh? Maybe we can. I bet the secondary is gonna get the last hit now. Man, having a CV around is so helpful. Summers actually hasn't turned the A. Does Summers even have AA? I don't know. I remember one of the Italian or US destroyers didn't have it. Also, we avoided another set of Summers Tarps, and now we're gonna... Actually, we're probably gonna get hit by one of the Tarps. Maybe not. We can turn in. Yep, we avoided it. And I guess we'll go after the Graf Zeppelin now, right? She came from that... Oh, okay, I forgot about the... Summers did get the last laugh, I suppose, and I ate two more Tarps, and... Double flooding. I don't have Damacon for another 10 seconds. Damn, that's a bit unfortunate. I did find the Graf Zeppelin though, so... AP it is, and hopefully we'll get some citadels. Well, that wasn't the citadel. So, it is... Uh, 7 versus 6 right now. Okay, it's a 6 versus 6 now, but... Once we take care of the CV, our CV should be able to run wild and... Basically win us the game, right? Okay, this should be an easy dodge as well. Come on, why am I doing so little damage to the Zeppelin? I suppose she does have a fairly well protected citadel, but... I feel as though I'm just not hitting the right portions. See, hitting CVs with guns tends to be difficult in my experience because... The ship moves in a weird way. By this I mean... They are a lot bigger, 
that and they move a lot faster for their size than you would expect. Not to mention that the citadel tends to be in the middle and then some of them it sits really low in the water. Come on, 5k damage. That was really unfortunate. I suppose it didn't use my rear turret though. She's completely broadside at 7 kilometers and I deal 1 over pen. 1 over pen of damage. You know what, maybe SAP would have actually been the better choice here. But I'm just hoping for that citadel. Oh god, I dropped to 800 HP. Well, I suppose only over pens it was, but we still managed to get her. She does get off her final drops, but I have a heal going, I have a damage control party available, I think I'm gonna be alright. Wait, this drop was way too close. I don't know what he was expecting from that one. I will just have to turn in. Or at least try to. I'm not sure if... Yeah, I don't think I'm in time. I'm gonna eat some of those. But hey, we're in a 6 versus 4. This shouldn't be too bad now. Especially because we have a CB. And they have one only one battleship left. Look! We have... A really healthy Alces, a really healthy Veneto. Well, I'm a uh, fairly low HP. We have a very low HP Shimakazu. Alces even took out the Maka. And our Amagi is fighting their Veneto. This is looking great. I mean, all we have to do is go take B and game's in the bag. Lexington can just go spot the destroyers, although I suppose spotting the Oste Atlan is a bit difficult. She does have pretty good AA. But spotting the Kiev should be no problem. And I mean the CV could just go help the Veneta too. Oh, where's the Atlan? There's a lot of HP left still. But that's alright, it doesn't really matter that much. Our Shima can just go around and try to head over to the I suppose she could go for the sea cap. She is fairly low HP, so it's better if she doesn't run into any of the enemies. But still, look, it's 6 versus 3, and we have a CV against destroyers. It's, it is really in the bag. But I just can't get an angle to fire at them properly. I am far away, but still. I wonder how the Yamagi is doing against them. Wait, wait, what? How is her Alsus dead? He had like 40k HP. Like a minute ago. What? What the hell? He had 40,000 HP a minute ago. How did that happen? Did he... Did he eat like a face full of torps? Oh, there's the Kiev. Okay, let's deal with the Kiev then. She is lower HP, so we should be able to finish her off. Oh, smokescreen. Fancy. I have one too, you know, but I don't have any heals. I am only at 12k HP, so things aren't looking up on that front. I'm gonna use it to disengage so I can turn in a little bit. Because right now, I imagine there are torpedoes coming and I do have to turn. Oh, there's one set. Okay, the uh, Veneta is getting a lot of them. Wow, he basically caught all of them. He had almost full HP before and now he is down to 6000 HP. Well done. And the Alsus actually burned down. Oh my god. What is this? We had two healthy battleships and now we don't have them anymore. And the Kiev gets the Shima because too. Are you kidding me? What the hell, Shima? He had no idea where you were. Why would you go and get spotted by the Kiev? What was that? Uh, um. Oh, and the Yamagi lost to the Veneta too. Remember how it was a 6 versus 6 and we had healthy ships? Well, it isn't anymore. What the hell? I mean, I'm gonna focus on the Kiev. I don't want to have to... I don't think we can deal with Yosta Etland and... can take out the Kiev first and maybe we can just keep dodging. Oh wow, and the Kiev got the other Veneto. What the hell? Okay, I got the Kiev, I got my Kraken. 
but now it's against Anesta Yetland and she has really fast torpedoes and I have to go into the B-cap here. <laughs> I hate this game. And this team. 12,000 HP still. Okay, 11,000 now. But she has really fast torpedoes and by the way, she's actually getting really close to that CV. Don't tell me our CV is gonna get torped too. That would be disastrous. In fact, it's already disastrous. They're at 908 points and their Veneto is still alive. And their Ostayotland even had a heal. Oh, <laughs> she's up to 14,000 HP. The Destroyer has more HP now. The fact that she's just not openly gunboating me is... She could probably win at this point in, in a straight up gunfight and their Veneto is gonna be in range soon. There's just no two ways about it. If I had a heal available still, this would probably, or at least we'd have a chance, but at this point I don't see it. I eat two torps, I'm dead. And there's... Oh, he actually fired both at the same time. If you're in this kind of situation as the Ostejotland, fire your tarp sets one at a time. That way he has to... the other guy has to still be on their toes. Like right now I know the Ostejotland doesn't have torpedoes. I can basically ignore him. I can do whatever I want. And I don't think I can actually kill the Ostejotland. I, I just don't seem to hit enough times. So I'm gonna switch over to the Veneto. Because I genuinely cannot deal enough damage. <laughs> Look at that dispersion, what? But yeah, I don't think I can kill the Ostejotland. She has too much HP, she's too maneuverable, and she probably still has another heal left. Gun taken out? I don't want to waste damage on it. In case I get set on fire, I do not have any heals anymore. Yeah, the Ostejotland has 12,000 HP. There is no way I can kill her with the kind of dispersion I've been getting. At least I'm dealing damage to the Veneto, but it's nowhere near enough. They win and <laughs> I get one more salvo and that's it. Even if she shows me broadside, chances are we still can't get it. This is really unfortunate. We were in a six versus three for God's sake. How did they just all die? But yeah, I agree, CVs are pretty bad against destroyers in these kinds of situations. You really need something that can actually threaten the destroyer. Also, the torpedoes are here now. But that's okay, because the game ends before they actually hit me. I hate this game. Seriously. I did so well! I mean. What more do you want from me? I got a Kraken, I sank the CV, I was constantly the one dodging the CV attacks. And still, we lost. Confederate, Dreadnought, Kraken, I kept the base. I did 115, I got 1885 base XP. I have enough XP on the losing team that I would be number two on the winning team. And somehow, that still was not enough in a tier 10 game as well. <sighs> Veneto isn't that bad, but I don't think she is, but I think she's the weakest of the Italian battleship line. She's definitely on the bottom up there. Because at least of anything that's higher than tier 7. Caracciolo is, I think, excellent. The Lepanto is so-so, Colombo is pretty good, and, well, the Veneto is meh. Commander skills. Emergency Repair Specialist. Grease the Gears. Adrenaline Rush. Emergency Repair Expert. Concealment Expert. Basics of Survivability. And Fire Prevention. Upgrades. It's what you would expect. We use the uh, Concealment Upgrade. Then Propulsion. Aiming Systems. Damage Control. And Main Arts Modification 1. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.